Figures on the MCAT cannot be understated. They are extremely important in visualizing the results of a study and you're going to get a lot of questions on them. A good example is passage eight in the BB section of the EMC sample test. So I'm going to get into it and show you exactly how to answer questions with the information in a table. Let's start flowcharting it. Reproductive physiology in rodents is adversely affected by both pineal gland secretions and high environmental temperatures. The following experiment was designed to test for possible interactions between these two variables. So we're looking at rat repro, and we know it's affected by pineal gland secretions and temp. And we're looking at interactions between those two variables. Two groups of male golden hamsters of approximately equal ages and weights were chosen. The pineal glands were removed from one group of hamsters. I think it kind of gives us uh, the name of the procedure and also kind of what they're going to call them later. The other group was subjected to an operation identical to PX except that the pineal gland was not removed. So that's going to be the sham operation. After a recovery period of one week at room temperature, half of each group was placed at 35 degrees Celsius, which is going to be the hot group. The other half remained at room temperature, which would be 20 degrees Celsius. So when there's two variables like this, I kind of like to set it up like this. There's going to be the hot pinealectomy group, the normal pi temperature pinealectomy, the hot sham, and the normal sham. The animals were kept in individual cages with water and food pellets provided continuously. After 30 days, the animals were killed and weighed. Pituitary glands, ad adrenal glands, livers, testes, and seminal vesicles were removed and weighed. So think about, we have a lot of glands here, a lot of like players in the endocrine system. We also have the liver and seminal vesicles. I don't even know what that is. Information on the role of the pineal gland and thermoregulation was also determined by measuring brown adipose tissue. So brown adipose tissue, um, it was not taught in my biology classes, but it, it has come up several times on the MCAT. And so if you're not familiar with it, get to know what it is. Um, basically, all you need to know is that brown adipose tissue is full of mitochondria and that it's involved in producing a lot of heat. Brown adipose tissue is the primary site of non-shivering thermogenesis. Yeah, exactly. Heat production in rodents. Averaged results describing the interaction of temperature and pineal gland activity on body and organ weights are shown in table one. So this whole passage pretty much was just setting up experimental methods and saying, well, this is what we're looking at and this is all the results. So a little figure interpretation, interaction of temperature and pineal gland activity on body and organ weights. So obviously the paragraph before said what we were looking at. So this is how they'll do like, instead of doing it like this, they'll do it like this a lot of times where they kind of have like one treatment and then they kind of break it up into, you know, the other treatment, the other variable in the second column. So we got body weight, liver, testes, pituitary, adrenal, seminal vesicle, and, the, and then brown adipose tissue. Look at the key down here. It says that the asterisk is going to be significantly different from normal temperature with the same treatment. And the cross is going to be significantly different from sham treatment at the same temperature. So I'm going to highlight that so I make sure not to get those confused when I'm looking at the results. I'm not going to look at any stati statistically significant results yet because you, as you can see, like there's a ton. So I'm just going to wait until a question prompts me to go back and look at a specific one. Question 40 says, which of the following organelles would be relatively more abundant in BAT than in typical white adipose tissue? So you can know this in one of two ways. You can either just memorize it, that's a fact, that they have more mitochondria, or you can think about what is the purpose of them, and it is heat production, and think about what is the organelle in our body that has anything to do with like the creation of energy, aka the creation of heat, and that's going to be mitochondria. Personally, I just memorized that that was kind of like what makes brown adipose tissue different is the mitochondria concentration and therefore that's what helps with the heat production. 41 says which of the following procedures served as controls in this experiment? So of course for every treatment or for every condition that's not baseline we are going to have to have a control and so what were the two things that they were looking at? They were looking at um, pineal gland secretions and so they did a pinealectomy and they were looking at the effect of temperature, and so they kind of, um, you know, increased the temperature. So the controls are going to be when they did not get their pineal gland removed and when they were at a normal baseline temperature, and that's going to be its choice B. 
Now we get into the questions that are not really basic science related. They are more related to the table. 42 says, according to the passage, the pineal gland has what effect on thermogenesis and wintering natural populations of golden hamsters? So this is asking us to interpret the results because the results were displayed in the passage, but they were not transcribed into words. So we have to go back and kind of look at the table and make our own logical conclusion. So we are looking at... Remember, we are looking at what the pineal gland, what effect it has on wintering natural populations of these hamsters. So I kind of brought down the table so we can look at it. The main thing we're going to be looking at here is this um, sham versus pinealectomy. And we are going to be wanting to look at the crosses because the crosses are the ones that um, there is a statistically significant difference between the sham versus the pinealectomy treatment at the same temperature. So where were those statistically significant results? Right here. So there was a difference in the weight of the testes, pituitary glands, adrenal glands, and seminal vesicles. Do any of those have anything to do with thermogenesis or wintering populations? Not really. What I was looking for was I wanted to see a difference in the brown adipose tissue because if there was more brown adipose tissue in the sham treatment than in the pinealectomy, then maybe the pineal gland has something to do with increase thermogenesis by helping create brown adipose tissue, something like that. But I don't see any difference in the brown adipose tissue. So the answer here is going to be C. And you can go through every single one of these answers and pick out exactly what's wrong with each of them. You can see in answer choice A, they are comparing um, normal versus hot temperatures. Both of the groups of hamsters have had the pinealectomy. So that's not necessarily the effect of the pineal gland on the thermogenesis that would be the effect of environmental heat so that's why a is wrong b is just not a true statement brown adipose tissue mass was not greater in the hot sham versus the hot pinealectomy groups as you can see here there was no cross in between um, those two results they were not statistically significant and d is wrong because again they are comparing the temperature and not whether or not the pineal gland is intact so this would be an easy one to get kind of overwhelmed with all the different numbers that are over here and all the different statistically significant markers, but just keep your head on straight and say, okay, I'm looking for the pineal gland and thermogenesis. That's basically like the pineal gland versus the brown adipose tissue. So if we looked at the difference between the sham and the pinealectomy on the brown adipose tissue, you're basically cutting it down from all these numbers to just the four numbers at the bottom, and we do not see a little cross there, therefore there's no effect. 43 says, consider an experiment in which normal golden hamsters are injected with either pineal gland extract or physiological saline. Which of the following results would not validate the results of the first experiment? So glancing down at the answer choices, I see that we're going to be measuring pituitary or testes weights, and they're going to try to make us draw a line between these two conditions and the conditions that we have up in the, uh, in the passage. So think about how these conditions that are mentioned in the question would relate to the uh, groups that we see up in the passage. So if they were injected with a pineal gland extract, that should, you know, be kind of the opposite of a pinealectomy. And we are told that these are normal golden hamsters, so I'm assuming the pineal gland is intact. So physiological saline would be kind of like the sham procedure, basically. So let's look at the answer choices so that we can kind of zoom in on exactly what we need here in this table. A says pituitary weights of PGX hot hamsters are less than those of P saline hot hamsters. So let's look at the pituitary weights of the pinealectomy versus the sham procedure. That would be uh, this column right here. So it looks like the pituitary weight was actually larger when the pineal gland was taken out. So less pineal equals higher pituitary. So in the case of the question, we should see the opposite effect, more pineal, which would be like if they were given the pineal gland extract, that should equal a lower pituitary weight. Is that what answer choice A is saying? Yes. The pituitary weights should be lower in the ones that got the pineal gland extract as opposed to the saline ones. We are looking for something that would not validate the results of the first experiment, and A would validate those results. 
B says pituitary weights of PGX hot hamsters are greater than those of PGX normal hamsters. So now we are comparing the temperature rather than the pineal gland extract. So let's see if there was an effect on temperature up in the table. So if we look up in the table, we're still looking at this pituitary weight. And I see in the sham procedure and in the pinealectomy procedure, there was um, a very, very modest increase when we upped the temperature. So no, it was not statistically significant. So this answer is kind of sus to me. I'm going to put a maybe beside it. It doesn't necessarily go opposite than the first study. Like it's not invalidating it, but it's, it's a little bit different. If there was really a statistically significant, which we're not really told whether the, the greater the weight uh, was statistically significant. So I don't know. I'm going to put maybe beside it and hope I find one that actually shows an opposite relationship. C says testes weights of PGX hot hamsters are less than those of PGX normal hamsters. Again, we are measuring temperature's effect on the testes weight, but we are going to be looking at this column instead. So we see that between normal temperature and hot temperature for both the um, sham and the pinealectomy groups, that testes weight was a lot smaller um, when the temperature was increased. So that is exactly what C is saying. So C would not invalidate the study. That would validate the study. D says testes weights of PGX hot hamsters are greater than those of P. saline hot hamsters. So now we are comparing um, the pineal gland extract. So it looks like we do have a cross arrow. So it looks like if you don't have your pineal gland, that you have um, a larger testes weight. So less pineal equals more testes. In this case, we're going to be looking at pineal gland extract addition. And so we're going to be adding pineal gland extract. So we should see a smaller testes weight. And answer choice D actually says the opposite relationship. It says that if you have more pineal gland, then you should have a greater testes weight. And that is opposite of what this is saying. So that would invalidate the study more so than B, which is kind of just like riding the fence. So you can see how certain tables are the backbone of a passage and how the AAMC can kind of exploit that in the kinds of questions that they ask. So you want to have blinders on and only focus on what the question is specifically asking and not get caught in the weeds with the liver weight or the adrenal gland or the seminal vesicles weight. If you like this video, please hit like and subscribe or leave a comment down below telling us what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.